Welcome back, everybody, to the Zig Comics channel. We are taking another look at an arcade game this week at the Galvin Ghost Arcade, and it is WrestleMania weekend. So why not take a look at the 1995 Midway game, WWF WrestleMania. It's perfect because it's the team that's brought you NBA Jam and Mortal Kombat wrapped in a, a new wrestling game like none other. And how did they make this happen? Well, they put the man himself to the test the excellence of execution. Brett the Hitman Hart. I was hands on all the way. You know, I worked on everything. Listen, when the Hitman starts something, he does it right the first time. And Brett, you did it, buddy, because this game is loads of fun. Uh, coming out of Midway in 1995, WrestleMania, well, WWF. WrestleMania, the arcade game, which is the title they had to use, you know, sticking on that subtitle, the arcade game, because there was a previous WrestleMania game on consoles. It's super fun. And I think the reason behind it is because it, it was in that new age era of gaming, where it was the big arcade boom in the 90s, and the popularity of fighting games, and the success that Midway had with them. In the early to mid 90s, we've seen the, the rise in popularity of games like Street Fighter, Street Fighter 2, Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat 3, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, and Midway really set themselves apart with this game, mixing the two worlds of fighting games and wrestling. Before this, uh, the wrestling games were, were very linear, back and forth, a small amount of buttons. This had a very similar layout to the Mortal Kombat button layout and all of the, the hidden goodies, the special moves that something like a Mortal Kombat would have. And in fact, many of the guys that worked on Mortal Kombat were working on this game, most notably Sal DeVita, who we talked about in our previous video on the unreleased Judge Dredd side-scrolling beat-em-up where Sal actually portrayed Judge Dredd. Along with that, he played Sector and Cyrax and Nightwolf from Mortal Kombat. And this was not the only wrestling title that Sal worked on. Years later, he would be working on an amazing wrestling game called, I think, WWE All-Stars, which would show him revisiting how over the top a game like WrestleMania the arcade game was with crazy exaggerated body types and over-the-top special moves. But as you can see, this has a, a great roster. This was during a time where WWF was losing superstars or wrestlers to the WCW. Some of the roster choices are kind of weird. You know, you got Doink the Clown there, Bam Bam Bigelow. I know he was uh, gonna have a, a big spot at WrestleMania this, this year when this came out. But you have Razor Ramon, Brett the Hitman Hart, you got Shawn Michaels, The Undertaker, Yokozuna, and Lex Luger. Now I did some research on this a little bit and I heard that Kurt Henning, the uh, Mr. Perfect, was supposed to be one of the characters that they were filming for and he, you know, he booked his flights, they were sending him off to the studio and he just never showed up for filming. So uh, that is not so perfect, Kurt, okay? R.I.P. But uh, it was said that these film sessions took two days to film all of the characters. And yes, I mean, we didn't even go over this part yet, but as you could see, these are the wrestlers. You Scott Hall is, is there. He went into Midway Studios in Chicago and filmed all of these moves just like guys um, that were working on Mortal Kombat would do back in the day. So it's likely to say that if there was no Mortal Kombat, there would not have been this game because they were using the same technology filming in front of blue screen. There's really cool footage on YouTubes of some of the filming sessions. Uh, you, know, you have Sal who seemingly was like the, the creative art lead here 
I don't know if he was coming up with the the moves, but he was definitely demonstrating the moves of how he wanted the wrestlers to do them so they could correctly capture it to be portrayed in the video game. But props to them for only taking two days to film these, these move sets. I guess by this point, Sal and the crew had this down pat. You know, they had already done um, a few Mortal Kombat's. They had those under their belt. Technology was was getting better and they were getting a hang of filming these these filming these moves for the game now um, Midway and maybe Acclaim I think put out a uh, a video back in the day that would tell you all of the the moves and combinations for the characters It's very cheesy. That's where that Brett Hart uh, footage is from where he's pretending that he's working on the game. Come on, you guys. There it is, right there in front of you the whole time. You're dereferencing a no pointer. Open your eyes. I probably should have watched that video before going in and playing this because I was hadn't played this in years. You know, I used to play this back in the day when I came to the arcade as a customer before I started working for the company. So I knew the, the moves back then. I would actually play Doink a lot. But each character, just like in a Mortal Kombat fighting game, has different combos, has different special abilities. And as, like I said, with the exaggeration of these characters, you know, Razor Ramon, his arm turns into a razor blade or like a sword, kind of like a, a Terminator type thing. You could lock up with people, grab them by the head, suplex them, do the razor's edge, of course. And each character has a different move set. There's a combo meter that fills up as you play. So you could do more damaging combos. You could Irish whip people. You could actually throw them out of the ring. You could climb up onto the turnbuckle. And the funny thing is too, you know, from Midway, you would expect a game like Mortal Kombat to have a bunch of blood and gore. Now, uh, this of course is WWF, so you can't do that but they had these really silly uh, replacements for blood. So Doink, when you, you punch him and do combos to him, uh, bowling pins uh, fall out of him. Uh, I believe you know, gold chains fall off of Razor Ramon, uh, hearts fall out of uh, Shawn Michaels, so on and so forth. Uh, so they really took creative license with the stuff and you could tell that the team had fun with this. And I think that's kind of a staple with these Midway games from the 90s. And you, you look at Mortal Kombat, you look at Mortal Kombat 2, uh, NBA Jam, NFL Blitz. These creative teams are really running wild with their imagination and having a blast doing it. And it shows up on the monitor as you're playing it. You really remember these things for, for years and years. Now, of course, it would not be a Midway game without some Easter eggs. So in the audience here, you know, uh, uh, because we're using digitized actors, you gotta have an audience. So you see a bunch of people in the background, all these guys, and of course they're the, the developers. You know, they're the, the creatives on the game. You actually see Sal in the back with the long hair uh, in the red sweater there. And in fact, a uh, uh, you know, local star, Man Cow, Man Cow Muller is in the background with of course, it wouldn't be Mancow without wearing his own Mancow shirt and his sunglasses cheering on. So shout outs to Mancow, the local shock jock for Chicago for decades, who actually frequents the Galloping Ghost Arcade. Another cool thing is the commentary. You actually have Vince McMahon's voice on commentary. I think Jerry Lawler is, uh, you know, doing color commentary for him. So as you're playing, you get that added to the experience as well as the sounds in this game. You know, Midway always has done great voice acting and great sounds for their games. A funny thing too, you know, this team, I think was directly coming off the success of NBA Jam at the time. And they actually had Vince McMahon say those crazy catchphrases that the, uh, the commentator for NBA Jam would say, like boom shakalaka. All in all, this game is, like I said, loads of fun. Unfortunately, I didn't remember to actually pull the game out so we could look at the side art, which has an awesome picture of The Undertaker on it. And of course, I had to pick, you know, Razor Ramon to honor the bad guy, rest in peace, brother. Uh, what a superstar. That guy is amazing. And uh, he's super fun to play as in the, in the game too. 
Now, I really wanted to make this specific video because WrestleMania is upon us. But while making it, I couldn't think of a comic to pair it with. There is a slew of wrestling comics. There's the, there's the Chaos Comics Undertaker series that they did back in the day. And there's a bunch of pretty bad wrestling comics, uh, including the WCW Slam Force which I think was put out by Marvel, where it made Bret Hart, Goldberg, Kevin Nash, Sting, and, and Chris Benoit into a monster hunting team. But I thought, no, don't, don't pick any of those up, guys. I wanted to use this time to just talk about what we're doing over here at Zade Comics. We create, publish, write, draw our own books. We put them out to you guys to bring you some awesome entertainment. As some of you might know, we are in the middle of shipping our newest comic. Now this is the fourth crowdfunding campaign we've done for a book called The Lost Pages 2. And the, I guess the tie-in to this is uh, Razor Ramon because the villain in this book is a fellow named El Dorado. When I was writing the dialogue, I kind of was inspired by Razor Ramon and Scott Hall and how he would speak as that character. And if I remember, I think I snuck in uh, some phrases there where he refers to himself as the bad guy. So this is our superhero universe. It's a, a cat and mouse chase through the city of Chicago. Good versus evil. Uh, gritty vigilante justice. If you guys love that stuff, you'll love this. Check out all the other books we have on our website, zadecomics.com. If you like hot babes and sexy art, my brother has this awesome art book out on the site as well. And we just launched the sign up for our next book, which is going to be a huge comic endeavor, a big project, a throwback to the old swimsuit special. It's going to be a, a comic summertime extravaganza called cg vacation so sign up now thank you guys for tuning in we will see you next time leave a comment below hit that like ring the bell let us know what games you want us to talk about next